Hello and welcome to K&K Play D&D. I am the first K, the Keith. And I'm the second K, Karin, and you are listening to Anna and Mokana, episode number 11. 11! And today's episode is brought to you by... Milos. Let's get those dice rolling. Previously on K&K Play D&D. I know that I've been gone for a while, you guys, and I don't want you to worry about me because I'm really actually doing really good. I'll tell you all about it later. It was really cool last episode because I got to see some of the people who I haven't gotten to see for a while, like Anna. But yeah, so I'm doing fine. No worries, Frankie and Tara are headed back to the keep, and uh, they were very surprised to see Kale there. And then Milos, which, you know, they're, they're less excited about than Kale. My exalted, great, and wonderful master, Lord Tarver. Oh, no. And Milos comes into the doorway from the other side, bows deeply to Tarver, looks at Nowhere's now, nods to him, and ignores Frankie. Is, uh, is this your dog? This is the dog that brought me here. It's a beautiful animal. Yes, she is wonderful. You often travel via border collie? No, I normally travel by my wavering. But You're I have by your what now? My wavering. But I have gifted that to your brother, the great uh, uh, oh. and mighty Lord Belkir of the Silver. He is leading the armies of Taff and Teth for the Winter Lord. I thought that was your job. It was, but I have been charged by our gods to come to you. Great. Well, okay. Uh, Yeah, I don't... Okay. Tarver turns to Frankie with a very pleading look on his face, like, get me out of this. (laughs) (laughs) My Lord Tarver, on behalf of the twins, I am here. For two reasons. There's a long pause. He just stands there staring at you, Tar. The first is to give you the gift of their labors. He takes this uh, wrapped bundle from a sling over his shoulder with great reverence. This, this is a gift from the gods, and I'm holding it, and I'm giving it to you, the gift from the gods. A gift from the gods to the gift from the gods. This is for you, and it's this wrapped package. Tar accepts. Oh my goodness! <laughs> well, I'm assuming he doesn't know this though because he hasn't turned over a piece of paper. He just got a bundle. He just got a bundle. But uh, he can open it and he can read what it is. Uh, he just doesn't know how he feels about Teth and Teth still. <laughs> yeah. So he he just he just takes it and sort of nods uncomfortably and looks pleadingly at Frankie again. Um so Milos. Hi. Welcome to my keep again. Uh so you're staying. No. Oh, you're not. I am not. There is another reason why I am here. Oh. Well, then spit it out. Of course. Frankie, the chosen one of Samick. No worries in the meantime, is still standing with his morning star drawn, like, <laughs> hands out, like, ready to jump either direction. <laughs> like, I don't know what's happening, but there is tension in the air, there, uh, and I dislike mm. it, and I don't know what's happening. Well, I will have this ready just in case No Worries does something. Oh, he won't do anything unless Milos does something. <laughs> he he bows deeply to Tarver. And Tarver uh, awkwardly bobs his head. And my great, one wonderful, and merciful, and exalted Lord Tarver. <laughs> exalted. <laughs> I am here to charge you to a task to deal with something that offends Taff and Teth's domain. You are their champion, O great and wonderful, wise and merciful Grand 
great Lord Tarver, you are the one to assist in their names with the plight that has arisen. Uh, if you, they want to make a deal, they need to go through Frankie. She's the one who draws up contracts. Hi. This is not a contract. Yeah, no, it kind of is, though. There. Tilts his head to one side, unblinking black eyes, looking down at Frankie. See, any time that any of the builders request anything of us, we need to draw up a contract to make sure everything stays above board. If you're acting as their agent, I'm happy to sit down and work out a contract with you. Taru is their agent. I serve my lord Taru. Right, well, Tarr hasn't accepted the task, and he won't accept the task if there's not a contract. See, I also am Tarr's agent in this situation. Like, literally, if you want to hire him, you need to go through me. Tarr is their champion. Right. They're the builders, though. This is just kind of one of those boundary things that Tarr has. And how will he get a contract? Well, you'll lay out the parameters of the proposed job, and I will negotiate things on Tara's side as far as, like, remuneration or any sort of things that he will require in order to complete such a job. But ultimately, Tara has the right of refusal. Looks at Tara. Looks at Frankie. Looks at Tar. Looks at Frankie. He is required in Mokana. Right, I already have someone in Mokana right now. So perhaps we could delegate. No. He is the chosen one of Taph and Teth. Life and death. And she's the chosen one of one of the others. Like, I think she's pretty competent. Uh, why don't we do this someplace other than the hallway? Can we find somewhere to sit down? I would like to sit down. Who are you? By the way, I'm Nowheres. Hi. Lord Nowheres, chosen one of Silo and Ro. I greet you. I am Milosh, High Cleric of Tath and Teth. Oh, that explains so much. I am a great fan of your work. Always happy to meet a fan. Uh, shall we find a place to sit down? I am perfectly content to work out this contract here. I, norm, normally a contract is, is put on paper, like a ta table or a desk or something. Right, and I just have the sense that we should have a witness. We have a witness here, indicates to the dog, who is now sitting and just watching the four bipedal beings. Right, so let's go to my office. Yeah. <laughs> All right. So the, they tundle off to the Frankie office. The five of them tundle off to Frankie's <laughs> office. And Frankie keeps her eye open for any brothers or sisters who might be there along the way that she could bring in. Sure, roll. Roll to, for perception. Uh, 24. All right, there are a couple brothers and sisters. You even see, you even see Brother Anger walking down one of the corridors. Okay. I raise a hand and flag him down. Da, Lady Frankie, what, uh, what do you need? Uh, do you have a spare ten minutes? Da, what? Looks over the group, frowns slightly, tail swishes. Da. Great. Come with us, please. Um. All right. You get to your office. The dog 
lays down right in front of the door after all of you go in. Right, so please sit. Dar, you come to my side of the table. Uh, yeah, yeah. <laughs> he does. Milosh continues standing while the tieflings sit. Milosh, high cleric of Taff and Taff, please sit in the chair. Since you asked so nicely, I am obliged. Great. And he sits at the very edge of the seat, back ramrod straight, hands folded and held right over his knees. Right, great. Head tilt slightly askew to the left. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. So, there's this thing that's happening in Mokana. Taff and Teth are unhappy about it, and they want Taurer to go take care of it. Could we have some more details, please? Of course. The dead are rising. Mm-hmm. Nowhere. So it's just kind of like, <laughs> okay. And Taurer being the champion of Teth and Taff, who are life and death, is the one who can end it. Wow, buddy. Impressive. Uh, I don't have magic that can take care of that. But you are the chosen one, the champion of the twins. No, he's got a point, though. Honestly, the person who we already have in Mokana, she's the paladin. She's the one with, like, the whole, like, this is a bad thing, let me smite you. Tara can't smite anybody. No, it's absolutely true. I can't smite anyone. But you are the champion of Tath and Teth. Great. Yes. Okay. So what does Tara get for completing this task? Blinks a few times, looks off into the middle distance. What would you like, Grandmaster Tara? Tarer looks at Frankie in a state of complete panic. Like, what am I supposed to say here? He looks over at anger. He's like, I am so out of my depth. What do I do? He looks up at Nowhere's. Nowhere's is trying to hide him, like how hard he's laughing. So he's keeping his face, you know, like, face, like looking straight at the floor. Nowhere's is very amused by oh, all this. Yes, yes, he should be. Uh, what? What's uh? What's Brother Anger, how is he taking this all in? Because this is all new for him, one imagines. The cleric Milos, um, are there any anything he can ask for? Is there anything he cannot ask for? Oh. That is a very good place to start, yes. Well, I have the authority of the entire priesthood to Taff and Teth at my disposal. Right, no, that's actually really good. Uh, how many of you are there? Two hundred eighty-five thousand three hundred sixty-four. That is a bigger number than I anticipated. Wait, they have two hundred thousand worshippers? Oh, that is just the army. Oh. Hold up, and Belkir is in charge of that? Yes. Who's, who's, who's Belkir? What did I miss? Oh, he's the, the dragonborn that we met when Tara got abducted. Oh, right, yeah, no, okay. Yeah, Belkir, awesome. He has an army. You have an army. I have an army? Of course. He we looks fight in your name. In in his name? Yes, he is the Grand Master Fantastic Leader Tara, the chosen champion of Taff and Teth. Nowhere starts snorting and has to like actively turn away. Tara looks over at Brother Anger again, just desperately like, save me, say something. So you say you have the authority of the entire priesthood of Taft and Teth and 
their army that is under a dragonborn name, Belkir. So is there anything... You, you have all the resources of them to grant to Brother Tarr. Yes. All right. So normally when <clears throat> these contracts are made, there's certain things you can ask for. Certain things... Ah, what is the word? Parameters within what you are willing to pay for someone's services. Oh, I don't understand. Yes, he, <laughs> he still doesn't get that he's hiring Tar. He's just assuming Tar is going to do it. But, but Tar commands me. Tar commands you? He is above my position within the priesthood. So if Tar told you to stay... I hope he wouldn't, because the affront that is happening in Mokana needs him. But if Tara told you to go take care of it... I am not equipped to. Why? You're a cleric. But he is the chosen one of Taf and Taf. Right. Let's say... Let's just imagine that he asked you to go with him. And, and then, Tara looks up at Nowhere's like, What the heck are you saying? Then I would go with him gladly and willingly and put my life on the line to save his and keep him from coming to harm. Right, good, excellent, love where this is headed. <laughs> I would serve him, fully. Tara, you were saying the other day that like you, you really needed like a page boy. When, when did I ever say that? I have never needed a page boy in my life. Nowhere's roll for BS. <laughs> Four. Not a very good roll. <clears throat> no. And no, um, Tara, roll for panic. 18? <laughs> you are panicking. Uh, it's a, what? I did. I did. What the, I never. Uh, I never. I never said that. I never. I was it. Did, what's a page? What? Did, if that were true, sir, nowheres, then I would gladly do that for Grandmaster Lord Tara. His title keeps changing. I find that fascinating. Is it just an organic, like, you just roll with whatever happens? His title is the universe. <laughs> Nowhere's has to bite his knuckle. <laughs> Why are you enjoying this so much? No, buddy, I just think it's great that you're finally, you know, have somebody around who really sees all of your hidden qualities. I will kill you in your sleep. Milos draws out his warhammer. Would you like me to do that now, Lord Tara? <laughs> no, no. Uh, because you would probably lose, and then I would lose a valuable... M member of the arm, me. Oh, of course. He's he, he, he's a very good fighter. Yes, I am a big fan of what he does. Right, so I don't want either of you to cause harm to the other one. Is that understood? I could send him away for a little while, Lord Tarver. Uh, no, no, no. No, don't do that. He he needs to be here. If you insist, Grand Master, highly exalted one, Lord Tara. Tara turns wide eyes to Brother Anger again, like, please? Frankie is just sitting, like, thinking about all this, mm -hmm. just listening. What would you be willing to, uh, to pay Tara for going to Mokana and dealing with this threat. Oh, whatever he asked for. He has a gift from the, from the twins in his arms right now. But I would be willing to give him anything else from their stores. 
Like what sorts of things do they have available? They have all sorts of wonderful tools. When you say tools, do you mean weapons? Do you mean like gardening? Do you mean magic? Yes. Because I have an idea. I'll have to discuss it with Grand Poobah Tarer first. Of course, Frankie. Please excuse us for just a second. Of course. <laughs> Stay seated. She pulls him aside into a back corner and pulls Tarer with her. Uh, no, I'm pulls nowheres with them. <laughs> All right, so an idea has occurred to me that if it works, brilliant, and if it doesn't work, no harm done. That seems like exactly what we're looking for. Yeah, that's what I thought too. So, Tara, please, like, take a breath, because I'm genuinely worried you're gonna pass out. Roll for breathing. Add your con. 16, he's fine. All right, you're still able to breathe. It's a bit raspy at times. What is this guy asking of me? Is this what it's like all the time when the gods like come to you and like ask you to do things? Is this like, I am just a dude, right? Like I've spent my entire life hiding in the forest but with my kid. I just want a quiet life. I never asked for any of this. This is way outside my frame of reference. Right, and it's not totally outside mine. So, good thing we're together, hey? It's, it's sort of convincing for Tar, but he's like in a high state right now. I mean, he just saw his kid and all this thing. So, um, so, Frankie motions them both a little closer. What if we ask all of the priests, all of the army to create a tap and test that Kale is able to come to Patchwork safe and sound in a timely fashion, no bodily harm, Like, the worst that can happen is that nothing happens. But if they really are as powerful as they claim, I don't know, maybe the prayers of all their faithful could expedite the process. Nowhere's leans back on his heels and crosses his arms over his chest like, huh, I would not have thought of that. I am like the least religious person in the world. Why would I? ask people to pray for me. Because it gets them something to do and it gets them out of your hair. And it sends a message to Belkir because undoubtedly it would get back to him eventually. And Tara considers this possibility and eventually is like, yeah, screw it. That's a good idea. Yeah, let's just that means I have to do it then. Anna's already there. Like, it's not like you'd be alone. But there's all the stuff to do down at the town, and like, there's the sabotage on like the, the bell towers and stuff. Well, it's Taff and Teth. Doubtless they have somebody who could assassinate whoever did it. Okay, I'm not asking for that. You're missing out on an opportunity, is all I'm saying. I also understand if that's not something you're comfortable asking for. Like, that's a pretty big ask. So, I mean, it's your choice. I'm drawing up the contract. Do you want me to ask them to pray that your son will get here safely and in a timely fashion? Or do you want me to ask them to assassinate whoever sabotaged the bell tower? I mean, both is good. Both, both seems good to me. Yeah, both doesn't seem good to me. We can't just go around assassinating people. Frankie, you can't do that. And why not? It was my job for decades. Well, that's what you had to do to survive, but you're like in charge of this place now. 
You have a responsibility towards it. If you start just killing people because they don't see eye to eye with you, that is a very slippery slope. You can't, you can't just do that. And it's not self-defense if it's a preventative measure. And if it's a preventative measure, like that's just, you can't, you can't. We can't ask for that. Roll for persuasion. Great. <laughs> Oh, that's a gigantic four. <laughs> oh, Frankie, how do you feel about Tara doing that? I mean, given his background, I understand his feelings. I also think that he has these ideas of what the ideal noble should be, and he's never actually lived it out himself, but... I see his point. I won't include it in this contract. Might find a different one to include it in. Mm -hmm. But it won't be in this one. Nothing that has his name associated with it. So you break up your little powwow and head back to the desk where Milos is still ramrod straight, hands folded on his knees, head still slightly cocked to one side, the right side now, and is staring <laughs> off in the middle distance. His Black-eyed gaze just piercing that space in between all space. And and what is Brother Anger up to? And Brother Anger is leaning on his chair, kind of towards you all like he was listening from afar. He's got a little smile on his face. Milos. Frankie. I speak as agent of... His Eminence Tower, in case that wasn't clear. Agent Frankie. Right. Contract drawer Frankie. Francesca to you. Francesca. Yeah, no, Frankie. Frankie's better. Frankie's better. Frankie. I was just just trying something there. It didn't it didn't work. It did not. No. Okay. For your so. benefit, it did not. You are, of course, aware, given that you are so loyal to him, that his son is not in this realm. No, he is not. His son comes from the realm that you all come from. Exactly. You are perhaps not aware of just how friggin' strong this kid is. He is the son of Grand Pumbaa. Lord exalted his eminence, Tarver the Majestic. I'm really sorry about adding Puba in there. I'm really sorry. I'm regretting that. That's like, there is buyer's remorse. I'm sorry. Of course he would be strong. Right. Well, Tar doesn't really have a lot of magic. His son does, apparently. And he's working on a way to come here to Patchwork. That is wonderful. It is. We would all celebrate his arrival. No, I think we would keep it quiet. It would have to be like a low key. Oh. Like just in the family celebration. You know, just, just small. Okay. <laughs> no worries. No worries, guys. Okay. Yeah, just like the, the 200,000, like not beyond that. I can make that happen. And Tara glares up at nowheres. <laughs> Frankie doesn't, but she does have to work a little bit to keep her composure. Oh, of course. Roll for that. Roll for composure? Roll for composure. Nat 20. She's fine. Oh, she is good. Her training <clears throat> is mm, spot on tonight. Absolutely. All right. So, the 200 thousand of you or whatever. The praying type? Are you the praying type? Always. Right. Our movements are prayers to Taff and Teth. Excellent. Our killing our prayers to Taff and Teth. And our prayers are prayers to Taff and Teth. Great. So, we have a prayer to add. Is this part of the contract? Yes. Oh, of course. There are a couple of 
just a couple things that we need to add to the contract. Number one. Well, I should let you know that since your arrival, all of our prayers have had Tarver in them because he is the great and exalted and mighty champion lord of us all for Taff and Taff. Well, that's probably the reason he's not dead, so thank you. There's one reason. Thank you for the jackalware protection. And Tarver's eyes get big because he had sort of forgotten about that. And Nowhere's <laughs> is kind of like, what is he? Jackalware's. I feel like that's vaguely familiar. That happened at least like 20 episodes ago. <laughs> I actually have no idea how long ago it was. It's more than that. Yeah. <laughs> like 30 or 40. Anyway. So we have a prayer to add. And the prayer is this. That Taurus' son will find the way through safely and quickly to join us in a place where he will be physically safe. Where no harm will befall him. Where he can see his father and be welcomed preferably here into my home. And that this will happen without any bodily harm to Kale or any other members of our family. That is an easy payment. The second condition. And that is? Tara must be able to make contact with my agent, who is already in Mokana, and to work with her to find a solution. The one chosen by me. Oh, oh, you mean the builder. Oh, I was yes. very confused for a second. Yeah. The most hospitable builder there has ever been. And the most hospitable paladin there has ever been, presumably. The paladin that has been on loan from Sana Ashun. On loan? Is that what they're calling it? Of course. So the gods trade around their pawns? Just here, here's a loaner. You can pay me back later. Ah, <sighs> Good to know that the gods are as capricious as ever, hey? I do not know what you mean by that. No, I don't suppose you do. That is all you request? She glances at Tara, and Tara sort of shrinks into his chair. <laughs> Looks over at Brother Anger again. Brother Anger shrugs. Looks up at Nowhere's, and Nowhere's goes, oh, that's right. Uh, you forgot the thing about like the, like the ginger ale. What? Yeah, he wants like 20 cases of ginger ale delivered here. Ginger ale or ginger ale? Yes, 20 cases of each. Of course, we can do that. And Tara's like, I don't drink ginger ale, what the heck? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Is there anything else? Um, yeah, I'm trying to remember what the other thing was. And Tara's just like shaking his head like, oh no. But he doesn't <laughs> want to say anything. <laughs> he needs some of your best builders to come here to Seabrook to rebuild our wall. To rebuild the city walls. Oh, of course. How would you like them built? Out of what type of material? Stone. A stone. 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 Stone walls. Of course. For protection. With gates. Built on the, like, foundations that already exist. Ah, that is doable. Is there anything else? Nowhere's has this, like, check in himself, like, oh, oh. <laughs> Like, yeah, pro probably probably better not make that crew any bigger than like twenty. Like it's a it's a small crew sort of thing. Unless no. Probably better make that crew like no bigger than like thirty. Like there's not 
I was planning on 10. Even better, even better. That's even better. And Tara's like, yeah, that one's actually pretty good. <laughs> of course. Is there anything else you require, Master, Grand, Lord, Exalted, Tara? And friends? Uh, no. No, that's just those four conditions. Then I agree. And so apparently do I. In a minute, we're gonna need to sign some paper. Pulls out a small belt knife and is ready to prick his thumb. With ink. With ink. It stays better on the paper. If you insist. I do. My master. Yeah. No. Lord Tara. Yes, I The exalted mm -hmm. one. Yep, I insist. Of the twins. Yep. And the universe that we live in. Uh -huh. Of all the planes and the Denzins within those planes. Apparently. Yep. So, can your son walk between the realms because you're the lord of the planes? Nowheres. I appreciate your confidence in my abilities. Yeah. No problem, buddy. Great, so I'll just draw that up. And Frankie does. And Milos signs it with a very wonderful flourish. There's a place for Tarver to sign. There's a place for Nowheres and Anger to sign as witness. Mm -hmm. And Frankie puts her seal on the whole thing. And there it is. Master Tarver, do you need me to go with you to Mokana? I. Uh, yeah, probably, because I probably won't know what's going on otherwise. Or, like, where to look. Of course. I will go with you, Master Tara. Tanya, once we go through to Mokana, please contact the Lord General Exalted Belkir and tell him of what is required here in Seabrook and assist with everything for that. The dog rolls her eyes and sits up. Yeah, sure. You are you are ready to go then? I need to pack a few things. Of course. We will wait for you here. And like elevator music. Do 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 Tar goes and gets everything he might ever need for this wonderful trip. Mostly Does he just takes a moment to get his breath and to like compose himself and to like brace. Does he take a look at the, the wrapped gift he was given? No. Not yet. No, okay. he's not even thinking about that. <laughs> like he, he slings it on his back, but like mm -hmm. he's just, he's mostly just bracing okay. for however long he's going to need to be in Milosh's company. <laughs> and then he comes back to the office and everyone is there waiting for him. And as he comes in, the dog stands up, shakes her head, and the doorway stretches. And there are now two doors in the doorway uh, after some glittering light and whatnot. One uh, is a basic door with chipped red paint on it. Okay. The other one is ornate with overly done scroll worked edges and frosted pane glass set into a tasteful arch at the top. Wow. That's a thing. My Lord Master Tar, which one do you choose? Tar's instinct is always to go simple, so he gestures vaguely towards the the simple door. Okay. And we're gonna leave them there for now. <laughs> now, uh, now we go to Anna. Okay. Anna, you just had a wonderful trip with this great Dane through these cavern hallways and all that. It could easily have been a dream, except for the prayer book in your hand, mm -hmm. your glaive in your other hand, mm -hmm. and the bracelet now on your wrist. Right. You step through out of the stone door. 
mm-hmm. where it was in the griffin's nest before. It seems like no time has changed. It's okay. it's morning, just as dawn is starting to break in the east. Sounds of the kitchen rise to meet you. Okay. Pots, pans being used, whatnot. Mm-hmm. People moving about. The smell of food and all that sizzling. Is Sister True awake now? You can go check. I quietly walk towards her bed okay. and check to see if she's in it. She's still in it. She's like curled up in the blankets. Is Maximus with her? No. If I look around the room, do I see Maximus? Roll perception. Eight. No. All right. Can't tell. Go downstairs. Sure. All right. So you reach the landing. The door is gone. The dog is gone. Right. As are there. As expected. Yeah. Yep. I, uh, as I'm going downstairs, I look to see if Dorn and Seastone are down there. Nope. Okay. I'll describe what's happening in the common room real quick. Patrons are starting to trickle through. Both lodgers and laborers stopping in for breakfast on their way to work. It is not busy yet. Every stool at the bar is taken by local labor types. Only two tables in the sitting area has anyone at them. Travel folk. Uh, Behind the bar is a balding, middle-aged, half-orc man with a white apron stretched over his rotund belly. He's talking softly with regulars and cleaning some of the tavern's heavy mugs. There are two serving staff among the tables. A a human girl, teenage, maybe 15 or so, with ink black hair pulled back into two waist-long braids and a radiant heart-shaped face. And a tiefling boy, a few years younger than the girl, spiky auburn red hair just behind two pairs of small curling horns at his temple and forehead. They both look sleepy and bored, as if their shifts have just started. Of Nessa, the proprietor, no sign. No sign of her. All right. And at the table that you guys were at last night when you came in, uh, there is a sleek white Japanese bobtail. Um, It's a breed of house cat. Just sitting there. I sort of wander in Mm -hmm. and make my way towards the cat. The cat is watching you with its emerald green eyes. Are you awakened as well? Yes. It's good to meet you. I'm Anna. Yes. Um, Anna Tascara. I am Lyra. Lyra. Yes. It's a pleasure to make your acquaintance. And the cat bows her head. Yeah, that's a pleasure to meet yours. You, uh, you wouldn't happen to have seen another of your kind. Maximus. Yes. Not since about five o'clock. What time is it now? Probably six, six thirty. He could be anywhere then. Yes. Well, I suppose I should have some breakfast. Of course. I will go tell the cook. I appreciate that. Thank you. Mm-hmm. She jumps off the table uh, and make a perception check, Anna. Uh, modified 20. All right. Uh, as you're surveying the, the room, there are two things you notice. Under where Lyra was sitting, there's a folded up piece of paper. And two, right next to the door that enters into the common room, there's a red door that has just appeared. I blink and sort of look around to see if anyone else has noticed. A few others groggily glance at it, shake their heads, like trying to wipe their eyes. And as you watch them react to this, the door opens and two figures step out. 
You instantly recognize one as Tarver. And he's followed by a rather tall, very skinny human man in armor. And there you have it. Another episode of K&K Play D&D is in the books. That was episode 11. Of Anna in Mokana. And that was a wonderfully fun episode to record. Because Milos has no idea what he's doing with contracts. He is genuinely one of my favorite NPCs, though. <laughs> he's so much fun to RP. If you like Milos or any other R- RPC? Yeah, RPC. Any other NPC, let us know on social media. You can contact us at KNK Play d and all the usual places. Except for Google Plus still. We're still not doing that. We still stand strong in our yes. conviction. <laughs> we stand solidified against that. Music. Was written by... Me, mostly, I guess. Mostly hey? you. There might have been a song by me. It's possible. Possible, yeah. And anything that sounded remotely ambient is from TabletopAudio.com. Guys, have you checked them out yet? Amazing stuff over there. I'm going to get mad if you haven't checked them out. Uh-oh, you don't want her mad. Mm-mm. Hit like, hit share, let your friends know about us. You We'd know love the for them to join us over here. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Leave us a review on the places that allow you to leave reviews. You can't believe how much that helps us win against the algorithm. Rar. Yes. Even just a star or two Ooh. or three or four or five. I like stars. I you like gold stars. who else likes stars? Milos likes stars. You know who else likes stars? Who? Your daughter. She sings All Star by Smash Mouth on a regular basis. Get your game on. I'm really sorry that I introduced that to her, except that I'm really not. And finally, this is Karin, the second K of KK. And this is the key, the first K of us. You had to think about that for a moment. We're <laughs> signing you. off. Thanks for listening and, and be, be well. well. <laughs> wow, we are, we're just precious, aren't we? <laughs> yes, we are.